welcome back soldiers uh, today uh, i have a first video about uh, yeah a class guide uh, we'll go over the following uh, topics i want to talk uh, at first like uh, yeah for who's marksmanship hunter what the playstyle in general uh, is and uh, yeah what you can uh, expect what are the strong points and also what are the the weak points of marksmanship hunter uh, after that i want to go over like uh, what in my opinion are like some of the most beneficial uh, race, uh, races towards uh, the marksmanship hunter then afterwards i want to go over some uh, some uh, talents builds uh, for battlegrounds and also for arena fights and after that i want to go over the stat priority as a marksmanship hunter which stats you should uh, go for and then you know in general which gear uh, would be the best for you uh, and after that some of my uh, marksmanship hunter macros that i use and that i think you will enjoy as well so let's get into uh, the first subject. Let's go. So who's Marksmanship Hunter for? Well, the Marksmanship Hunter is, uh, of course, the first you have to look like uh, a Desert Caster. We play from uh, long range uh, to try and get uh, burst down our enemies. Um, also, if you like the fantasy of being uh, yeah, an archer or a ranger, or of uh, playing with a gun like a sharpshooter, then the Marksmanship Hunter playstyle might be something for you. Uh, in PvP, when we look at it, Marksmanship Hunter uh, has a, a quite strong burst uh, cooldown. Even without double tap, uh, it's still very noticeable. Um, I would say like uh, a weak point for Marksmanship Hunter would be like outside of the burst window. The decent is okay, but it's not something very spectacular. And also with the yeah, Hunters in general, like uh, we have some defensives. Yeah, but the defensive we have, like yeah, they are uh, okay. They're not very strong and what i dislike about the defensive is that most of them have like a pretty long cooldown besides from that uh, hunters in general have like quite decent mobility and uh, with for example disengage if you uh, talent into it as well then you can get some roots off and get away uh, quite quickly and uh yeah what i like about marshman over other hunters is uh, like more about the fantasy of being like a real sharpshooter playing from range uh, trying to down our enemies from uh, as far as possible and with the yeah, the marksmanship hunter, if you look at the mastery, um, the mastery makes sure that uh, all our damage is increased, but also the range of our damaging abilities will be increased. So you can hit targets further away than, than anyone else. So usually when you fight another uh, caster, for example, you'll be able to fire at them way earlier than they are able to fire at you. So yeah, that's what uh, in general I think uh, the marksmanship hunter is for. And uh, let's get into the next topic. Okay, next up we'll talk about races uh, that I think that are useful for PvP. We'll look at the Alliance first and then after that we'll go to the Horde races to, which, uh, to look at which one uh, are useful. For the Alliance you have some, uh, you have some great options. Uh, I will go over like a few safe bets. Uh, one of that is really good is obviously Human. Uh, with the Human racial uh, you can break out of stun effects. Which is always helpful because usually hunters you die uh, when you get stun locked uh, and also beside uh, yeah breaking out of stuns i think it's once in three minutes uh, after that it also gives you some increased secondary stats like increased haste increased critical strike mastery and versatility and that's also just a minor boost to your uh, to your damage output uh, and with human uh, because you can break out of stuns what you can do you can run a double dps trinket to get even more uh, even more damage output and that's why human is always for pvp in general is a really good race and for the hunter is no exception human is always a good option after human i would look into dark iron dwarf uh, if you've unlocked it you can see i didn't unlock that <laughs> yeah race on myself like uh, all the other races because some of the question lines are quite tedious to do but anyway dark iron dwarf is really good because of the following uh dark iron dwarf you can purge off uh, uh some uh, diseases some poisons uh, bleed effects and that's really useful because uh, what I've noticed myself in PvP is like uh, oftentimes I would, uh, if I would kill someone, but I was dotted up completely, uh, I would die shortly after because just all of the dots sticking so hard. The Dark Iron Dwarf makes sure you can purge all of those those off of you, and also the more items you purge off of you, it increases uh, your primary stat. So this will give you like a, this can really give you a huge burst window if you clean off all the dots. And if you combine it with your burst uh, rotation and your cooldowns, you can get some insane damage. And that's why Dark Iron Dwarf, usually in my opinion, is a really strong choice. After the Dark Iron Dwarf, of course you have the regular Dwarf. For the Hunter, I would advise you to pick the Dark Iron Dwarf over the regular Dwarf. 
But anyway, Dwarf is also a good uh, good choice. Stoneform does the same like the Dark Iron uh, Dwarf race, so it gets rid of any uh, bleeds and magical effects and poisons and that kind of stuff. But what it does differently, it also reduces your physical damage taken by 10%. So it's like a little bit more extra defensive. I think the Dwarf, if you prefer a little bit of a tankier hunter, then for sure go Dwarf. Uh, and the increased effect from critical strikes can be nice, but I would advise that one for other classes that can really reliably get uh, critical strikes every time, for example as an elemental shaman. Uh, so that's why for Hunter I would prefer uh, the Dark Iron Dwarf over the regular Dwarf. What is also a really good uh, pick is the one that I play myself, is a Night Elf. And uh, if you look at pure damage wise, Night Elf might not be the best, but the thing is about the racial Shadow Melt is so universal. It's uh, for the hunter, it acts like a, a second feign there. Like you can drop out aggro uh, in combat. Yeah, you can do it, you would, uh, do it in combat to vanish away. People will not see you. Uh, in battlegrounds, I use this sometimes when I uh, have to sit or defend bases. I'll go stand somewhere, uh, pop shadow melt and just wait for the enemy to come. And they think there's no one there. And uh, all of a sudden a hunter pops up to, uh, to catch them by surprise. Uh, Shadow Melt is like a higher end uh, ability, it's not as easy to play with as for example the Human and Dark Iron and regular uh, Dwarf Racials. But what you can do with Shadow Melt if you time it uh, perfectly, for example if a warrior is about is uh, throwing a Storm Bolt to try to stun you, the Storm Bolt you can actually see flying through the air. If you press Shadow Melt before the Storm Bolt re actually hits your character, the Storm Bolt will actually miss and you'll not get stunned. So that's really valuable, but really difficult to learn how to play with Shadow Melt. But once you master it, you can dodge some amazing CCs. And also, for example, uh, if a hunter, uh, yeah, elder hunter just pops rapid fire on you, you press Shadow Melt, the target, uh, the targeting goes off, and you interrupt like yeah, the, <laughs> the biggest damage ability of a hunter. Uh, you can do the same, for example, when a kill shield is about to hit you, you can Shadow Melt. The kill shield will miss. You can also do it with Aim Shield. Or any high damage ability that's about to hit you, or any stun that's from range, range that has to travel through the air to hit you. When you press Shadow Melt, that attack or ability will miss. Besides that, it also is uh, with uh, the Night Elf, you get like a 2% increased dodge chance. So yeah, you have more chance to uh, just ignore damage completely, which is also nice. And also on a minor thing, like the movement speed of the Night Elf is permanently increased by 2%. That's not huge, but that's the Hunter you see, like in the talent tree, uh, you'll see uh, uh, further down the video. If you stack it with all the other movement speed increases, it can be, <laughs> you can be a quite fast and slippery Hunter. But also when you uh, uh, when you use uh, the camouflage ability, because it's kind of a stealth, you get the 5% increase movement speed, which is also kind of useful. But that's in generally why I like Night Elf. It's like uh, with the Shadow Melt ability, if you combine it with camouflage, in theory you're like a rogue. You can play like a rogue, you can sneak around uh, and not be become visible at all. I always use, uh, yeah, say this, like a Night Elf is like a rogue with a bow. That's why I like it myself so much. On the alliance, you have one more character that I think that's also decent for hunters, which is the gnome. Um, of course, with disengage, you can get off the movement imp uh, impairing effects from you. And what I like about the escape artist is it does the same. It's only on a one minute cooldown. And it doesn't, it doesn't share any cooldown, uh, with, the, uh, cooldown uh, with the trinket. So, for example, with, with the dwarf, when you pop uh, the defense to get the bleach off of you, your, your uh, trinket to get out of stuns and fears will have a 30 second cooldown. The gnome ability doesn't uh, affect that. You can still use the trinket right after. Also, you get a little bit of increased focus pool and a little bit of extra haste. And that's in generally what uh, the gnome is good for to get out of roots more often and it doesn't share a cooldown with a trinket. So that's in the, on the alliance side, uh, the race shields, in, in my opinion, that I think are the most useful. When we look at Horde, uh, after like of course the PvP trinket uh, bonus that reduces incoming CC, the Horde took kind of a nerf. Like for example, Orc in that way is a little less viable. But when I look at Horde, I still think Orc is in my opinion the best race for Hunters. Because it gives you an extra enrage, so it's like another trinket effect. So when you pop your burst, if you macro it into your burst window, uh, yeah, you pump out some more damage. And even with the resistance to stun effects, I believe with the trinket bonuses together for PvP, it gives you a 10% CC reduction. And you have some boots that you can get across the boots. It gives you another 5% reduction of uh, incoming CC. 
So that in total would make 15% of reduction of CC. And the York Razor does it by 20%. So you'll get an extra 5% which is also still useful. For the Marksmanship Hunter, also if you play with a pet, you'll have the, uh, the bonus with Orc, that that pet does a, a lot of extra damage. It's a 1% extra damage increase that your pet does. So still, even with those PvP trinkets, uh, uh, the income, yeah, reducing the incoming CC, Orc took a big hit, but still I think Orc is your best uh, bet for, for Horde uh, as the a Hunter. After Orc, there are another few options. Uh, personally, I always like to uh, play as Troll, Troll also uh, suffers a little bit the same like the Orc, because the Troll uh, ratio also reduces incoming movement uh, effects. I think also by 20%, and of course uh, with the trinkets and everything that we just mentioned, uh, you'll get an extra 5% of uh, reduction of incoming uh, movement impairing effects as a Troll. But what a Troll you're really going for is the uh, ability uh, the ratio Berserk, increasing your attack and casting speed. I think it's a roughly 10% or 15% uh, not sure but if you use that one in your burst uh, window you really notice it and troll in that way is still a really good uh, good pick after the troll what i would suggest is uh, going in that uh, why in that in that uh, of course now with the evoker class also in the game evokers can actually uh, i think fear some or, or put people asleep uh, so with the in that ratio uh, you can remove any charm fear and sleep effect uh, so it's kind of like the human ratio, but I think the undead ratio is a little uh, is is a little less strong. But in that, I would still think because of that region, it's uh, yeah a really good good pick. Also, uh, you can uh, with touch of the grave. Uh, sometimes your uh, ranged ability does some extra shadow damage and also gives you some health back. I've tested it out; it's not that noticeable. So for pure damage wise, I wouldn't go in that. But uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> Even uh, with, with their racial, they look amazing. Then also some honorable mentions on the Horde. Uh, if you're not going pure damage-wise, uh, uh, damage what I also like is playing uh, a Goblin. Uh, why is the Goblin any good, you would say? Well, it gives you the rocket jump. So it's like uh, if you uh, look at the terrain you're playing in a battleground, for example, if you're up on a hill, you can actually jump off of it to get some distance. But beware that after you use rocket jump, you cannot use any uh, abilities that reduces falling uh, 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 speed. So for example, if you do rocket jump, you can't use the goblin glider uh, to glide away. That's one thing you have to take into uh, account. I didn't, uh, I wasn't aware of it a few times. So I jumped off a cliff to like, haha, out I outsmart you, I get away. <laughs> and I pressed like the goblin glider, but it actually didn't work. So I fell to my dad. So yeah, the other guy, I, I guess, I had a good laugh of it. But that's about goblin. Uh, yeah, the rocket jump can be uh, can be can be really really viable as well to get away. Uh, for the same reason, if we look at the mobility, what a lot of people don't talk about is the high mountain tauren. Well, I also played the high mountain tauren, uh, yeah, a few years ago. But what I did like about the high mountain tauren is the ability that you can charge forward. I think it's called the bull rush. You charge forward a, a short distance. And everyone in your path you knock down so there'll be knocked down like maybe one on 1.5 or two seconds it's not that long here's the thing you can use that bull rush ability for so much more you can actually use it to, to escape or if you want to uh, you want you want to close the gap it's another really good gap closer and if you're being slowed down for example by a frost maze if you uh, uh, if you activate this ability you'll still run at full speed. So the High Mountain Tauren is a really good pick if you want some actual utility in either escaping or charging someone down, like uh, closing the gap. Also, you have some reduced uh, damage from incoming attacks and increased versatility. And in PvP, we know versatility is a really, really much appreciated stat. That's why I think the High Mountain Tauren is also a really good pick. What you can do also, um, you can also play Blood Elf. In the past, I think a few years ago, the Blood Elf racial uh, it was like a, a silence effect. You can actually silence some uh, someone. And then in that time, it was really overpowered. Especially we're playing uh, against a healer. If you got a healer down low, you would press the uh, ability. You would actually uh, <laughs> silence them so they couldn't heal themselves and also not their teammates. But they changed that. Uh, they changed that a lot. Uh, now that ability uh, cleanses off a magical buff from the enemies. I do think because with Hunter you. Uh, have inter of course an ability in the talents uh, that you can purge off magical effects and a range effects but that one is always so randomly uh, usually you try to get off a bubble from a paladin and it purges off like a minor buff it's quite random what the blood off ratio ability does it gives you another ability on a short cooldown you get some focus back when you press the ability as well if you're kind of focus stars it also helps a little 
Uh, but uh, with Blood Elf, it gives you another opportunity to purge off uh, Paladin's Bubble, Blessing of Protection, or anything like that. So I still think uh, 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 Blood Elf is viable, and especially if you want to go for the Elf vibes uh, as a hunter, definitely go Blood Elf. But those are the racials I think that benefit uh, hunters the most uh, in PvP. Let's continue. Alright, now we're at the most exciting part of the video. Let's talk about talents that I uh, usually run with uh, when doing some PvP stuff. So let's uh, have a look. So this uh, build that you see right here is the one that I usually go for uh, when I do some uh, battlegrounds. It's a little bit more of an uh, AoE uh, uh, heavy build. If you look at the hunter uh, points uh, available on the general tree, this is what I run with. Of course, concursive shot to slow people down. Kill short. Uh, post haste is an absolutely must to get some uh, movement impairing effects off of you. And also get uh, to get a slow uh, speed uh, bonus. Also improve kill shot. Absolute must if someone gets low. And if you hit them with kills and a crit, it absolutely does massive damage. Natural mending is one that I like to get the cooldown of her main heal ability uh, down. Counter shot. Absolutely must to interrupt enemy spells uh, that are being cast or heals. Then we have uh, Tar Trap to slow people down. But what I like about Tar Trap if you combine it with the entrapment. People will actually be rooted for 4 seconds, so it can be great to lock people into place. What I like then more also is uh, Survival of the Fittest, an extra cooldown. Uh, yes, an actual wall that reduces incoming damage. And to even increase the damage uh, that is being uh, reduced, I also go with Nature's Endurance. What you can also do is improve traps to get cooldowns uh, of traps down further. You'll see especially uh, down the end we run of Steel Trap uh, to also get that cooldown uh, down even more. It's really useful can be used defensively and offensively and uh, if you go down uh, camouflage absolute must to sneak around especially if you're night elf you can't go without this talent you cannot simply not go without it you need it uh, what i like others otherwise as well if you run with a pet you can go with intimidation to stun someone i found re recently that i like running without the pet more for the extra damage and yeah the pet AI is just so stupid sometimes it just uh, gets me killed a lot especially when i'm camouflaged and my pet just randomly runs off to attack another uh, player's pet or demon it's so annoying so i like uh, a high explosive trap in that way uh, more and yeah in some certain battleground maps it gives you some potential to knock people off the map which is always fun also here we can go for binding shot or scatter shot if you're running battlegrounds i would most of the time uh, advise you to go binding shot uh, purely for the fact that it uh, can affect multiple uh, players scatter shot would be more useful if you know you're most of the time are being targeted by one player and you just want to lock that player down also an advantage of course of scatter shot is if you look at the call cooldown this one is a 30 second cooldown and the binding shot is uh, yeah quite a little bit longer at 45 seconds cooldown but this mostly depends on what you expect do you expect to be uh, targeted by multiple people or chased by multiple people i would go for binding shot if you think that's not the case go with scatter shot also what i like uh, to add some more survivability is uh, rejuvenating winds uh, it increases the uh, the healing of uh, acceleration by another 20 percent but then it turns that last 20 percent into a heal over time of eight seconds another advantage i would say uh, while going with this is without uh, playing with a pet if i go to the spell book and find it where's that ability yeah fortitude of the beer if you play without a pet uh, you'll get this ability on a two minute cooldown increases the maximum health of you and your pet by 20 percent for 10 seconds and instantly heals you for that amount so if you pop this ability right before you use acceleration you're being healed by much more the instant heal will be higher and also the 20 percent heal over time of eight seconds will also be higher i'll show you what i've done with this ability in a macro later on in the video but that's what i wanted to mention so uh it is quite strong so what next well i always like the extra movement speed um so i went with pathfinding and uh, before i also ran with trailblazer but uh, the thing is yes it is nice but it's only nice if you haven't attacked or attacked someone for the three seconds otherwise this one's completely useless uh, so i was uh, playing around with it in battlegrounds and i found out the permanent six percent uh, movement increase is really good already because it doesn't matter if you attack someone or not this one is really situational it does work really well if you're trying to flee away from people so that you're running away and you don't attack them then it gives you an extra speed increase then it can be really useful we go down further the tree uh, of course go with keen eyesight uh, why yeah because we want to unlock death chakra it's a really good damage ability it also uh, gives the enemy a debuff so uh, you do 10 percent more damage to your target that's, that has been affected by death chakra but also the targets around your target that are being hit by death chakra because death chakra can hit multiple people and each person they hit also get the damage uh, the, the buff that, they, that they'll take 10 percent damage from you here it says only for 10 seconds but that's kind of not true uh, if you use death chakra you'll find out that it bounces like seven times right but 
every time it bounces, it goes back to 10 seconds. So it's actually longer than 10 seconds. And I don't see many people mention it, but I think that's quite important because, uh, yeah, it's actually the 10% damage increase you'll do. It's actually longer than the 10%. And also a nice added benefit. It also gives you more focus regeneration. Uh, yeah, which uh, I think marksmanship hunters nowadays, uh, at least if you will go on the next three as well, if you don't pick uh, the buffer to... Uh, that is short. You kind of get focus starved quite often, but Death Chakram, absolutely must. Okay, the one that's next is kind of optional, but I like for uh, Battlegrounds. I went with Serpent Sting, and then to unlock Hydra's Bite is really nice, because if a lot of people are grouped up, uh, if you dot them up with Serpent Sting, uh, you'll see like that two more targets will be uh, uh, hit by Serpent Sting as well. So in total, three targets will be uh, getting the Serpent Sting on them. And also, which I really like, is a 20% damage increase to the overtime effect of Serpent uh, Sting really nice and especially if you combine it to this uh, talent serrated shots serpent sting and bleed damage increased by 20 percent this value is increased to 40 percent against targets below 30 percent health so you see what i'm going here it's like you get a 20 percent flat damage increase to serpent sting no matter what then you get another 20 percent uh <laughs> increased on top of that on adult and when the targets get really low so below the 30 percent health mark then it will be buffed to 40% increased damage. So that's why I really love uh, the combination of serrated shots with Hydra's Bite. Because when people get low, those dots do really, really good damage. And uh, yeah, oftentimes on my video, you can see that I get random kills. Yeah, why is that? Well, because I dotted some people up, they get low by either me or a teammate. And then those dots start to really tick and can actually down people. Then Steel Trap, I also pick because uh, having more traps, more possibilities to land CC is really good. The thing about Steel Trap is like, it acts like a kind of a second freezing trap. Freezing trap can be really, really useful, but usually what you'll see, you'll throw down a freezing trap. They'll use a trinket or whatever to get out of the trap and they'll immediately charge you. Well, with this talent, you can drop another one of those traps and they're stuck again. And the thing about this one is, it also puts a bleed effect on them. So they're, they're trapped in place, they're bleeding, and because of this talent, they're bleeding harder. That's in the general tree that I really like the, the talents uh, for Battlegrounds. That's a little bit of AoE. Let's look at the marksmanship uh, tree. So with the marksmanship tree, of course, of aim shots, mandatory, I think is already uh, by default that one selected. What I do then is a uh, crack shot that, uh, yeah, for some extra uh, focus reduction of your uh, main abilities. Uh, precise shots uh, for the huge damage increase after you aim shot. And you can have a proc of one or two if you're lucky of arcane shots. Uh, and if they crit, they can really hit hard. And a lot of people, uh, yeah, underestimate the power of those uh, arcane shots that are being buffed by this uh, talent. This one is kind of optional. You can deviate from this, but I've went with Lone Wolf because uh, before I played with a pet, now I don't. So you get a 10% increased uh, damage output, all of your abilities. But the main thing I, I took that one is even if I would play with a pet, I would still uh, pick Lone Wolf because I just like this talent uh, a lot, Hunter's Knowledge. Aim shield and rapid fire critical strike chance increased by 10%. Um, you all know that uh, aim shot and uh, rapid fire is, I think, the biggest damage source of marksmanship hunters. And here's the thing, by increasing the critical chance, and with the step you'll later see, if they crit, oh my goodness, their health will just be gone before you know it. That's why I really like hunters' knowledge. And also the aim shot, sometimes if you get someone low, you can get the aim shot in, and it crits, it's an absolutely murder people. Uh, what I also take is uh, rapid fire of course main ability you gotta need it this is our strongest ability streamline just for a flat damage increase and also as a side effect will uh, after you uh, hit rapid fire it will make your aim shot go uh, go off faster uh, and also here you have two choices i always went with surgeon shot again to increase the damage of a rapid fire even more and remember when that one crits because we increase the chance of critting of that a bit by 10 percent with this one it will do some massive damage. Careful aim. It's really nice for hunters if you can sneak up on someone from camouflage and if they're uh, above uh, the 70% health, your aim shot, your first one will do really big damage. And because uh, over here we took Master Marksman, it will actually put a, a debuff on them, a, a bleed on them. And with serrated shots, that debuff is buffed again because it's a bleed damage. So you see what I'm going for? You have a lot of modifiers helping all the abilities out. But let's see what else is on here. Target practice. Archangel multi-shot damage increased by 25%. My opinion, absolute must. Death blow. Aim shot has a 50% and rapid fire has a 25% chance to grant a charge of kill shot and cause the next kill shot to be uh, usable on any target regardless of their current health. I picked this one because I want to go down the talent tree and it's really nice. And I really love kill shot. Race of fragments. Uh, yeah, that's a, a bleeding uh, effect that will be put up on your target after you... Uh, 
you use the you got the effect from death blow and it also the kill shot will do 50% increased damage threat on the fifth target kill shot targets for 20 percent damage dealt by kill shot over six seconds again being buffed by serrated shots downwards we have uh, we go with fully this is optional you can also pick a uh, tactical reload to reduce the uh, cooldown of aim shot and rapid fire this is where usually the the uh, the ability uh, double tap was sadly that one is gone but hey we have to live with it and we still can work around with it i just don't like tactical reload i think it's a too meh ability so what i've done i've done volley which is nice if people stack up you if you press volley you'll get trick shots so what does the what does that mean uh, that effect if you get the volley up well that was loud can that one go away yes bird lady go away <laughs> don't interrupt volley group of enemies you press it they'll get trick shot uh, which means if you aim shot on that target it will bounce off to multiple targets as well and that also applies to your uh, rapid fire so if people are, people are being stacked really good ability and it does run good damage so over 30k uh, damage here i'm not that geared so for you probably it will do even higher but i like it one button press big damage and especially with uh, what's coming next or further down below uh, sharpshooter not necessary you can also go to the left of this tree to go to salvo but i like sharpshooter uh, because uh, i'll explain a little bit later to the right with the abilities it increases uh, the critical strike damage by four percent again we have some buffed kill shots with increased critical damage this one will make it even higher so again a nice buff to your whole toolkit salvo this one uh, I like uh, because when people are stacked up together, you can do some really good damage with uh, with this one. Because once uh, in 45 seconds, which is also cool on volleys, every time you press volley uh, to target, yeah, they'll be affected by an explosive shot without taking the explosive shot talent. And then they explode, big damage. But it's also nice, what I like about volley, it's like a mini burst window it gives us. So outside of a true shot with a 2 minute cooldown every 45 seconds, you can have a mini burst cooldown, as I like to say it. Let's go to the little to the right. Of course, true shot, our main uh, cooldown ability, uh, reduces uh, the cooldown of aim shot and rapid fire by 70% and causes aim shot to cost 50% faster for 18 seconds. While True Shield is active, you, you uh, regenerate 50% additional focus and you go in 1% critical strike chance and 2% increase critical damage every 1 second stacks up to 10 times. The last part is only because I went further down the tree. I see a lot of other high ranked people, they don't go with Eagleton, Eagleton's True Focus and also not with Unring Vision, but they spend it on Serpent's Trickery uh, and Lock and Load for example. Yes, you can try, but I just like this one more because it gives when I pop through shot, it <laughs> really hurts and people better start running. So moving down, Eagle turns true focus, what does it do? Uh, it, it, if you do it two times, it will make sure that uh, the true shot buff the window uh, is extended by three seconds and it reduces the focus cost of arcane shot, chimera shot and multi shot by 25% uh, and reduces the focus cost of aim shot by 25%. Seeing that we usually are, yeah, in my opinion, kind of focus staff. This is what I like because I don't have to wor worry about it so much. One thing you have to take into account, be sure to have as high as focus uh, when you are about to use through shot for an increased damage. Otherwise, you have those awkward moments you want to press aim shot, but hey, it's still on cooldown. Uh, further down, uh, you have two options if you want to have uh, uh, more true shot uh, windows go with calling the shots but i went with unring vision and why uh, while true shot is active you gain one percent increased critical strike chance and two percent increased strike damage damage for one second stacking up 10 times so that will mean further down in the window you'll get a when is it a 10 percent increased critical strike chance remember we also took hunter's knowledge which will be 20 percent then see what i'm going uh, and a 2% increased critical, critical strike damage dealt every one second so that will be a total damage increase if an ability crits of 20% oh and look we went with this down so there's, there's another 4% this build once you press your cooldown it can really destroy people it's it's quite kind of scary anyway I have to explain a little bit to the right so what I've done here focus aim aim shot and rapid fire damage increase by 10% yeah that's a no brainer you have to get that one bursting shot yeah I like as a defensive sometimes it this completely doesn't work in my opinion and I really think Blizzard should do something about it but I've made a macro that kind of made this work and I'll show you later down in the video what I mean with that and I'll show you how useful it can be what I also like is to go with dead eye kill shot now has two charges and it has a cooldown reduced by three seconds if someone gets low and if you have two charges of kill shot kill shot can do some ama amazing damage I've seen it pop for like over 100k and imagine if you have that two times well, the, the chance of the enemy surviving that is so slim but this is generally uh, what I like to run with in uh, battlegrounds or if you do arena fights it will be completely different and I'll cover in a minute but this is generally 
uh, my battleground uh, setup. Try it out for yourself. Uh, you'll see why I like Marksmanship Hunter as well. Especially for the, the battleground. Because I always think uh, the Marksmanship Hunter is like the battleground king. You stay away from enemy fights for long and do some huge damage. But then you're really dependent on your teammates. Because if you're getting focused, well, you're also gone really fast. This is the general build I use for battlegrounds. Uh, let's go over the single, more single target arena build. All right, now that we covered the uh, battleground uh, loadout, uh, let's go into more of uh, yeah, the loadout you can use for uh, arena fights and solo shuffles. That one is a little bit more uh, single target orientated. So let's see uh, what I've done there. So this is how uh, the talent tree uh, looks like uh, when I would do uh, arena fights or solo shuffles. Uh, yeah, I will go down the tree and I'll show you what I've uh, yeah, why I've done some certain changes here. We start off with kill shot again, improved kill shot, post haste, natural mending to get the cooldown of a heal ability down, uh, counter shot to interrupt, star trap, entrapment. And what we've done differently is, uh, yeah, I went with tranquilizing shot. And why I've done it here and not in a battleground uh, build, well, I'll explain. In battlegrounds, uh, I do feel like uh, tranquilizing shot, uh, if you use it yourself, you always notice it, it usually purges off a really random, useless buff from the enemy. And in battlegrounds, I feel there are so so many buffs it's just way too random this ability but when it comes to arena fights or solo shuffles that's differently because you don't have as many enemy targets to go for that's why i run it with uh, arena fights i run tranquilizing shot because the chance of purging something up that's actually quite important is higher in arena fights that's why i like tranquilizing shot and arena fights and not for battleground what we've done here uh, we've run with natural natural nature's well, nature's mending Jesus. And also uh, rejuvenating wins. Also uh, born to be wild because in arena fights, uh, yeah, having some cooldown reductions is uh, really important. Especially for your big defensive cooldowns. That's why this time I went with born to be wild. Camouflage must again to open up from stealth and get an increased aim shot off. In arena fights, I usually run with a pet because then the pet utility, utility can be quite nice. I usually go for uh, a pet that gives the uh, master skull ability to get roots off and when you have a pet yeah in arena fights again you don't have multiple uh, enemies so then intimidation is actually better because yeah a knockoff in an arena fight yeah not that useful so in arena fights go with intimidation instead same here with this one uh, usually in battlegrounds i took binding shot with arena fights i'll do scatter shot because usually you'll you want to lock out one person one target their healer or if a, someone does a big damage cooldown uh, window you want to scatter shot them or the healer and that in that case is better because yeah blinding shot yeah that, this in arena fights get a shot is bad also because of the reduced cooldown and you can lock someone out of the battle for a few moments then what i've done there the movement speed uh, as a marksmanship hunt in arena fights is difficult you're really stationary you have to plan ahead i feel the movement in speed there isn't as useful as in battlegrounds but i would prefer to have some extra damage reduction from area of effects with six percent uh, to unlock uh, the tree further down uh, the road. Then Keen Eyesight I went with. Also went with Master Marksman. Because I want again the Serpent Sting. But instead of Hydra's Bite. Because there are not as a lot of people to cleave on. I usually go with Poison Injection. To our aim shot. We'll consume stacks of Poison Injection. To apply like instant nature damage. Uh, and that stacks up to 10 times. And that one can also crit. So yeah for single target. This one is the way to go. I went with Arctic Bola. I know a lot of people are on the fence of it. I kind of dislike it as well. Because uh, if you trap someone. Especially in Arena. Trapping someone for some C, landing CC is really important. Arctic Bola is just some random effect that can really break your traps and ruin your whole setup if you're unlucky. What I want to unlock is for single target, I want explosive shot uh, to make my burst window uh, even bigger, but I'll uh, explain more when we go into the marksmanship uh, tree. I'll explain why I, I do take uh, explosive shot here. Also, we end with that chicken for the increased damage, some extra focus regeneration. Then I had a point to spare left and was like, yeah, where will I put it in? I don't see anything useful. I went with serrated shots to bump up uh, yeah, the bleed damage and poison effects a little bit. But that's the general hunter tree I, w I do uh, run with uh, a solo uh, shuffles and arena fights. Let's go on to the marksmanship uh, side. So uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, run uh, different builds. This is the one that I prefer for uh, solo shuffles and arena fights. Uh, I can tell you I'm not an expert in it. I really <laughs> do uh, hate arena fights. But sometimes yeah, you have to get some quick conquest points to get some, uh, some good gear. I absolutely hate it. But if I do arena fight solo shivers, this, this is what I would do. Uh, crack shot. I went with precise shot. Improved static shot is optional. This time I didn't went with lone wolf and hunter's knowledge. Here's the thing. With this build, hunter's knowledge isn't that useful. Because we go with a lot of explosive shots. And in arena fights, uh, yeah, I always run with a pet. I never do it without it. Oh goodness, that goes again. <laughs> I'm recording a video. Can you please be quiet? Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> bird lady always talking through. Uh, okay. I didn't win with Lone Wolf, didn't win with Hunter's Knowledge here. In uh, Arena Fights, I usually run with a pet just because of the extra utility and also the debuff. Uh, if you, uh, for example, a Raptor is a really good one to take because it can give like a mortal wounds effect on the enemy. Reduce incoming healing. And the Master's uh, Call, which is from the Cunning... Uh, Pet family uh, in arena fights. I just feel that one is an absolute must. But in battlegrounds, don't do it. it. Can be nice the utility, but the pet dies so darn quick in a pet AI in battleground is so ridiculously stupid. It got me killed so many times. So yeah, I don't run with that uh, this time in uh, my arena build. Rapid fire, streamline, killer accuracy, uh, surgeon shots, death blow, target practice, careful aim to get a big opener, focused aim. Increasing some damage. A defense with a bursting shot to get melees off of you. Went with dead eye. So I can get two charges of kill shots for some really huge damage. This time I went with Serpent's Trickery. Why I want to have the lock and load in single target. And on the left side to go for Volley. A Sharpshooter again. Palvo. What I like now is with combining it with the Explosive. If you're really single time we want to burst someone down as quickly as possible. What I would do, uh, you pop your cooldowns, you can do an explosive shot on the, on the enemy target. He'll get that one up. And you can do a volley on him, in, on him and he'll get two explosive shots him. So explosive shot will hit twice that way. That can do some really big damage. Especially if you're lucky and it crits. And because of it crits, with sharpshooter it will be buffed even further. Because explosive shield is also fire damage, it totally ignores armor. So also good uh, against heavy plate wearers like paladins, dead knights, warriors, etc. And what I've done here in the middle, of course, to buffer burst window, true shot, eagle turns true focus, uh, and unring vision again. Really nice stacking up with sharpshooter to get some really high numbers. So yeah, this is probably... Uh, yeah, this is my build for uh, for arena fights, my single target build, if you would want to call it, that I like to run with. That's what that's the that's the build. Uh, what I didn't mention yet is the PvP talents. If I can give you an advice, survival tactics, absolute must. Don't change this at all. Uh, next one, I for battlegrounds I usually uh, choose sniper shot. It can uh, give some huge damage as well. Twenty percent of the enemy is gone no matter what, uh, and it increases your range, which is in battlegrounds is really funny. Because people just can't touch you and you just kill people from across the map, or <laughs> sort of say. In arena fights, don't take sniper shot in arena fights. I would actually go with a Jamaral Sting. This one is kind of hard to play around with, but you have to get used to it. It's like a, it has three debuffs on the enemy. And each debuff lasts 30, oh yeah, 33 seconds. The first three seconds is Scorpid Venom, which reduces the movement speed by the enemy of 90%. After those three seconds, this one is the one why I usually go for it. Spider Venom. Silence. So after the first initial 3 seconds of the movement slow, you get a 3 second silence on the enemy. This is really useful to harass enemy healers to interrupt the spell casting. Or if like him himself is low, or one of the team is low and you know he wants to heal him. You pop this one right before, before that. You have to do a little bit of planning because you have to take into account the first 3 seconds which is slow. Which is meh. But you really want to have the silence effect, which is the three seconds after that one. And then there's silence and you can absolutely try to kill and finish someone off quickly. After that, the last three seconds, you'll get Viper Venom. Also good, which is another 20% reduced damage and healing. And remember, you're running with a pet that also does a mortal wounds uh, debuff on the uh, enemy to already reduce the healing. Plus another extra 20% reduction. Can be really nice. Camaro Sting. You almost can never go wrong with. What I've done here is uh, I went with Ranger's Finesse. This is more of my Battleground video when I know I'm not being targeted that much. Usually if I have some good teammates uh, covering me. Uh, this one just makes sure like my uh, uh, the cooldown of uh, acceleration will be downed even further. And you'll see later down with a macro that I made like why it's really nice to have that one reduced. Otherwise in arena fights uh, what I usually pick is Roar Sacrifice. Because again you're running with a pet. Have Roar Sacrifice, you can protect either yourself or a friendly target uh, from critical strikes. So for example, a rogue is popping all their cooldowns and goes for the big burst win window. Either you are stunned, you can still use this ability to, to make sure they can't crit on you, on a teammate who's being targeted, to make sure that they can't be crit. And then your healer can actually react and heal up. So it's, it's good to kind of ignore some burst windows. Roar Sacrifice is good, but if you decide to run without a pet, don't take raw sacrifice because you need a pet in order for it to work. What you can do if you run without a pet, there's a few things you can do. What I would suggest is go for true shot mastery if you're running without a pet to reduce your cooldown uh, window. And also uh, then uh, you don't have to plan ahead like, uh, oh, we have uh, someone uh, standing in front of us. Okay, can you go away? So, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
never mind. With the True Shot Mastery, usually when I play like uh, without True Shot Mastery, you really have to look at your focus bar because you want to be as high on focus as you can before using True Shot. But with this ability, you don't have to plan ahead with that because when you pop it, it gives you 100% focus. So it's kind of a nice ability, reduces your cooldown window. And you don't have to worry about, oh, do I have enough focus? No, it will give you 100% focus. You're good to go fire and blast away beside from that there are not too many great picks but yeah that's usually i will not even cover that in battlegrounds concussive concussion can be nice if it is a battleground uh, with a lot of melees that it will uh, charge you down consecutive concussion is good because you can slow them down like another additional 20 percent but they're slowed by 70 percent so they're really like mm, slow-mo really nice and if you cast steady shot three times then they'll be stunned so it can give you another stun but the thing is what i found cast casting of three Steady shots is kind of hard because you'll get interrupted or stunned or whatever. So I usually take it purely for the extra slow. That's usually the talents uh, that I run with. Uh, yeah, feel free to uh, play around with it. Uh, and yeah, let's go to the next part of the video. Okay, we're at the part where we'll talk about uh, stat priority this time. So for the Marksmanship Hunt, if I look at uh, the main stats, I would do the following. I would first go for versatility. After versatility, I would prefer mastery. After mastery, I would go haste. And after haste, I would go for critical strike. A lot of people, they say like uh, they, they, they prefer critical strike over haste. But I disagree with that. Uh, I think haste is more valuable. Uh, I'll explain to you uh, why I think it is. Well, let's start with versatility first. Versatility also uh, re uh, increases your overall damage of all your ability, but also reduces uh, incoming damage. Mastery is good because it increases the damage of all your ability. And beside that, it also increases the range of all your abilities. That's why mastery is also really good. Uh, why do I prefer haste over critical strike? Well, let me explain. With the current uh, talents that I usually run with, we already buff uh, our critical strike for certain for our most damaging ability. We uh, already quite by a lot and critical strike it doesn't affect everything in the game it only affects uh, your damage output and your healing like for example if you uh, crit with your uh, heal yeah of course you'll be healed for much more but with damage yeah uh, it's only for the damage that can crit uh, also and cause higher damage numbers but why i like haste more is haste affects i think almost everything like every ability we have with haste of course you attack faster which can be nice especially for example if you're also willing to tell it uh, lock and load uh, because more attacks uh other attacks means uh, more chances of getting a proc uh, but also what i like more is like about haste it also reduces like for example if you cast an aim shot it reduces the time you need to stand still to, to actually fire off that aim shot and i think that can be vi quite viable as well and also uh when when I look at haste it's also a good one to reduce cooldowns for example uh, that's especially useful i think in arenas it's more useful than in the battlegrounds but anyway in uh, arena fights for example it's really important as a hunter to land cc's or aka land traps on a high haste you can reduce the cooldown of a trap so which means in a match you're probably uh, much more likely to use it than all the time but that goes for everything also the cooldown of your aim shield is also being reduced uh, by haste that's why i prefer haste over critical strike haste really affects i think almost all of our abilities and in that way it's more viable than critical strike because again a critical strike we buff you can buff a certain talents already to quite high quite high degrees and that's why i think indeed that uh yeah haste in my opinion is better than critical strike uh faster attacks more procs of kills uh kill shot if you spec into lock and load cooldown reductions fire off faster aim shots also your rapid fire uh, you don't have it can fire faster and uh yeah those are the major stats uh, priorities uh yeah that i would advise if we look at the minor stats it's not as important but i'll go over them anyway uh, for the minor stats i would go speed then avoidance and then i would do leads yeah it's just speed it, it, again it, it's, it's i think gives you the most benefit avoidance yeah mm, not that really and leads yeah it's out of the question it's just so minor it's not even uh yeah it's, it's, it's you you will not notice it at all but yeah i think that's the stat priority that i would uh, advise <laughs> well we're at uh, a part uh, that can be interesting for you guys uh, as well yeah before i want to go over uh, rotations i want to go over some uh, useful macros uh, that i use as a marksmanship hunter in uh, pvp we look at my macros uh, is actually full of uh, stuff i've been writing macros for uh, for years testing stuff out see what works what doesn't work and i think i have quite some uh, some good ones i'll go over the ones that i usually use for uh, pvp and uh, also uh, put them down in the comments so i get like an uh, aim shot uh, macro uh, which clears off any targets targets an enemy if they exist uh, if i'm not 
channeling anything, it will cast uh, aim shot. For example, if I'm uh, doing rapid fire, it will not cancel out the rapid fire. After that, I've put some uh, basic pet attack uh, abilities in there. So when I click, my pet usually would go there as well. But yeah, of course, if you don't run with a pet, it's uh, yeah, totally useless. But uh, yeah, anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll show what uh, I have it here on this ability. So when I press the ability, see it, it targets the deer. Oh no! Oh, you're dead. <laughs> You see, if I target him and he's dead, and if I press again, see, it targets something else and immediately fires another aim shot off. So that, that's great about it. You don't have to uh, tap target or click target like that. It just targets uh, the nearest enemy and it just fires off an aim shot like that. That's what I like about this one. Uh, I made a similar one uh, for arcane shots. So for example, I'll show again. I'll target the dead deer and I, arcane shot. It targets the closest enemy and fires off an ar ar arcane shot. If I come running, press the ability, bam, arcane shot. So it really makes your play like more, uh, more reactive, uh, like quite fast, if I would say. So what I've done also is like an aspect of the turtle uh, macro, but uh, yeah, lately, uh, yeah, I felt like it's not needed anymore. Um, usually, what I do is like I put it on here. It will uh, stop everything I, I do, and it will just immediately cast aspect of the turtle. So if I was casting an aim shot and I would press this one, it cancels the aim shot immediately. Activate turtle. It also, when a paladin is uh, uh, casting some oh some burst on you, it will make sure oh here again. Oh, I broke that one up. <laughs> it gets rid of some blessing of protection and that kind of stuff. It uses a health stone. Uh, I, I macro in there. It casts aspect of the turtle. I do the exclamation mark. Why? Uh, if you don't and you press it again, it will immediately cancel it. And uh, now there's a little bit of a delay in there. But if I press a, a little bit, like one second again, uh, it will cancel as of the turtle. And yeah, you can start firing away again. So what I've done here is something uh, interesting. Uh, I figured out, like usually when I was uh, playing in Battlegrounds, for example, I would just fold away with a disengage to get some roots off, get some distance. Uh, and especially if you have a pesky warrior or, or whatever, high mobility class, they'll be on you immediately. Well, I found out, like, for example, with uh, Binding Arrow and Bursting Shot, like, they're not on the, sh on the, on the CD window. So that means uh, you can, if you press this one, one, it immediately costs, like, a, a Bursting Shot. Like, if you watch some of my videos, you've seen me uh, do this. So, I went, okay, let's see, this is a warrior, he's on me, and I want to get away. Well, I can do this. See, see what happens there? It fired off a Bursting Shot, and then it disengaged. Well, it gets even better if you're on high terrain. For example, we're uh, we're on a hill like here, but a little bit below the hill, and the warrior comes charging in at me. Like when I press this ability, I fold away and I push him down off the hill. So that's a really nice one to create some uh, expert damage. Seriously, you can knock some people quite far away. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So this one is uh, yeah quite useful. Uh, I've used in the past. Uh, works great. But I also made a variant with where is it? So with the other macro, with uh, uh, when I want to disengage, uh, when there are multiple people, uh, yeah, going after me, and they're like, "Oh, I want to kill that hunter," but I made a macro it's like a self burst. So they also made one with uh, binding shot. So uh, yeah, when I press the ability, like uh, before I fall away, my character shoots down uh, uh, a binding shot right at my feet because I use an add player uh, uh, command in there, and then I, uh, yeah, I just disengage away. And if they want to uh, chase me. Of course, with the a bit of binding shots when they move further away than five years from them from the arrow, they'll get stunned. So yeah, then I can stop uh, stop them right in the track and it looks something like this. They're chasing me and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna press the ability. Let's do it. And we're away. See? It left the binding arrow there, people will be stuck, and I can just sprint away. Really, really useful. And you can also uh, make a macro with that using yeah, particularly any trap, because all the traps don't have uh, are not on a CD. So you can do it also with a tar trap, and if you combine that indeed with the talent uh, uh, entrapment, they're also stuck there. What I found, like if you do that, especially warriors, they can just charge right out of there. The warriors, you really need to stun in that way, and that's why I prefer using the binding, uh, the binding shot with it, because then they're just stuck there. They can't chase, uh, charge you again, and good luck with that. Okay, I use some other uh, macros as well. Basic camouflage uh, uh, macro. Um, usually when I feign that, I can also go over that. I also, when I run over a pet, I also use the ability uh, like find that for the pet. So he's out of combat and then I can uh, cast camouflage. Uh, with this macro, what it does, it stops everything I am doing. Uh, 
it puts the pattern follow command and I cast camouflage so I go stealth like this and also if it's up uh, it will uh, wake up my pet again and then he'll be also be camouflaged it's a little macro uh, yeah useful to get away from uh, people we have uh, a basic counter shield macro this is a counter shield uh, if you have a target it will uh, just uh, shoot counter shield at your current target if you see hey there's a healer there in the back trying to heal him or cast a damage spell I also put a, a mouse over part in there so I can do this I'm, I'm just uh, for example I'm gonna shoot this guy do some damage and that guy is wanna cast something I can do mouse over macro so he saw that so I, I put my curse on that target press the ability and shot the counter shot on this target so yeah that uh, can make it uh, really quickly to interrupt uh, an enemy what I also done is a concussive shot macro this one's kind of the same as the interrupt like uh, I'm uh, you know trying to damage this guy and I see hey that guy wants to charge me I can just pop and concussive shot on the other guy I have the same with an explosive shot macro uh, it basically does the same it, it uh, will uh, tell my pass to atta attack that target and it also works when I mouse over it it will uh, for example if I'm targeting this one attack and I want to have the explosion on that guy I can do with mousing over and, cast and pressing that ability here's my uh, my thing that uh, macro it just uh, stops everything I'm uh, doing right now like casting and just immediately cast frame that and this is uh, one that uh, yeah, I've been playing around with uh, a little. It stops my casting. Uh, it will cast for my pet to play that. And of course for me, it causes me to also feign that. I think this one is better than that one. Uh, yeah, purely because of, uh, yeah, I experiment with it, added this, and it really works. Flair. Yeah. This is uh, of course for those pesky rogues. Sometimes I'm really clutch of getting them out of stealth. For example, I mark them. Which I'll show also as my anti-stealth macro. Like when I mark them, sometimes they just... Uh, Rogues use their ability the cloak to get off the magic effect because the uh, hunter's mark is seen as a magic effect so they can purge it off uh, with the cloak of shadows which I've seen in a battleground video also uh, I've seen them do it and I'm like okay <laughs> but anyway but when I they do it and I see them walk in a direction I can just quickly just uh, press this button oh wrong one press this button and it fires off a flare so then even if they purge off my mark if I'm lucky I can get them out of stealth again and start attacking right away. So in combination with that one, uh, it's where is it? It's not this one. I made a different variation of it. Anti-stealth. Yes, this one. So what this ability does with my hunter's mark, it will uh, target an enemy. This command makes sure it will target the closest enemy to you. So this one you can really spam. And when you target something, uh, it will... Uh, you will start attacking me, so you'll fire an arrow or a bullet at them. Also tells your pet to immediately attack. And this one cast uh, at, at, at the mouse over or at your target. So if you targeted someone from stealth, immediately start shooting, you'll still keep him. But this makes sure, like, even if you say a rogue in the, see a rogue in the distance, for example, when you press the ability, you can, you can just target like this. Target like this. Target like this. And you, you see my character already start shooting immediately. Target like this start shooting so that's really really useful on uh yeah with that macro i got a lot of rogues killed uh, before it's a really absolute blast uh highly uh advise running with it i think here the serpent sting i put in there i don't think it works but let me try no that doesn't work so that one i can just leave out okay if we go back to the macro and what's the anti-stealth so this last last one doesn't seem to work so we'll get that out of there yeah, really, really useful macro for uh, against rogues. Really useful. I have my kill shot macro. Uh, this one uh, immediately when someone's low, for example, if I'm casting an aim shot, but I see someone gets below the 20% and I will quickly want to finish him off. This macro will cancel my aim shot or my rapid fire if I'm doing that. Uh, it clears my target if it's dead. And it casts uh, at my current enemy uh, or at a mouse over. It will cast kill shot. But this one's really great for example in uh, battlegrounds as well if you have a bunch of enemies uh, and you see one of them gets low you can just target over the other one like this with your cursor press the ability yeah now of course uh, <laughs> i don't have cursor so that attacks the uh, closest uh, and it will cast kill shot at your mouse over target where you have your cursor so if it's this one or that one or that one you can really quickly uh, sneak in a kill in that way with kill shot highly usable Highly valuable, I really recommend this one, uh, 
So the Serpent Sting. Uh, not special. It's a Serpent Sting macro that uh, yeah, it will cast Serpent Sting on whoever is my target or whoever I have my cursor on as a mouse over and also does my pet to attack the target. Made the same with uh, Steady Shot. It's one of our basic abilities. Uh, so yeah, it will uh, make sure like I don't have anything targeted right now. Look, it targets the closest enemy and starts shooting. Um, also, I put in some basic pet abilities in there and a script UI error frames. Uh, yeah, because sometimes it can give a bit bug. This one makes sure that bug, uh, yeah, you will not have that bug anymore, at least most of the times. Uh, tranquilizing shot. Yeah, this is like a mouse over uh, tranquilizing shot. So, um, if I want to, that's my target, but I want to purge something off of this guy, I can do this. And there it goes. Mouse over macro, quite simple. You have your basic uh, trap macros, what you can do. Uh, this one is uh, cast at player, so this will make sure uh, the trap will be cast at your player's feet. Really basic macro, I don't think I have to put this one in there. And you also can make this one into an uh, add cursor macro. For example, if you want the trap to land right there. I think I have it. Is it this one? Yes, this one. This ability, so for example, I want, uh, I want them to be slowed down. Normally, if you don't have this macro, you'll get the, uh, the round green uh, circle. And you have to press it again in order to make it land there. Well, this macro will uh, make sure you don't have to take that extra time. And it will just uh, cast the trap at wherever your cursor is. So let me show you. I want it there. Press the ability. There it goes. See? And you can do the same with a freezing trap, for example. I want freezing trap on that guy. There you go. But I do think a lot of people are still, or at least not all people, some people like the green target or target reticle more because yeah, then you can absolutely see where it will be uh, casted. And sometimes, uh, indeed, if you have an ad curse, if there's a lot of uh, stuff going on, it's sometimes hard to see and you might miss the trap. Uh, explosive trap, for example, I have the same. There it goes. Boom. Basic uh, trap macro, you can use this uh, yeah, for any trap uh, that you want. Volley! Uh, so this is indeed uh, also... Uh, uh, a macro that will just make sure that it casts wherever my cursor is, so I don't have to click twice. So let's see. One of there. Yeah, it goes there fully. And talking about burst windows, let me find mine. Is this one? This is my DPS uh, buttons, right? This one. I tried putting Death Checker in there, but that one is on the CD, so it doesn't work in combination. So it's better to press this one separately. So what does this do? It stops my casting, cancels any protection that would prevent me from uh, attacking. So also my own aspect of the tool that would cancel. Um, I can show you later. Yeah, I can show you right on. It will start uh, to send the pet. Uh, use 14, that's the trinket slot. If you're an orc, it can use your blood ratio. Or if you troll, you can also uh, put it in there. Primal Rage. This one is useful if you have a ferocity pet. What I usually do if, if I'm in a battleground in arena fights, this is not useful at all because it's disabled, I think. Uh, but when you're in a battleground, uh, what I'd like to do first, run with a... If you run with a pet, start running with a ferocity pet first because then you get the primal rage, which, will, which is like a heroism buff to everyone, so it increases their, uh, uh, their haste massively. Then it will cast through shot and then it will start attack. So how does that look? So, like I said, it cancels as with a turtle. I'll show you. I'll press the burst, and there it goes away. And then you can just fire away accordingly. Like you want to, or would normally with your burst window. So yeah, that's the my burst macro. I'll leave it down in the description for you to use. And yeah, the, those are, as I've seen, are my most used uh, abilities. But I have one left. I have my heal, which I'll start in the talents. Um, where's my heal? So what I've done uh, with this macro is... Uh, like, if I said, like what I said, like if you run without a pet, look at the spell book. Okay, so with that macro that heals me up, let me grab it again. My macro uses uh, cast Forty of the Beer. Beware, it only works when you have a Lone Wolf as a talent, otherwise uh, you will not get this ability. Uh, so what this does increases the maximum health of you and your pet by 20% for 10 seconds and instantly heals you for that amount. Well, what I've done... I'll make sure before I heal myself acceleration, I'll cause this one to increase my health. When I increase my health, you'll see that we'll get healed even further. Because I also take rejuvenating wind, which heals me for an initial 20% of your maximum health over 8 seconds. Well, because we buff our health with that ability, the heal over time will also be stronger. And the initial heal uh, from acceleration will also be stronger. 30% of your uh, of 
of your health and your pet for 100%. Well, 30% is higher if you're above your uh, health bar by 20% by that ability uh, that we just showcased. Slotitude of the beer or the fortitude of the beer, that one. So that really complements acceleration a lot. And also what I've done with that one is what you can do as well. You can put after that you can put in like a health stone like for example in a battleground like uh, you have a warlock uh, and uh, you can get a health stone it also uses that so now this heal is really powerful really powerful and uh, i really uh, suggest you to try try uh, uh, play around with it because i'm having a blast with this one it's really good so yeah that was the macro part of the the video uh and after this we'll go on a rotation uh to see how we do bursts and how we do the general rotation and i'll see you there so yeah, let's go for uh, our burst window first. Let's go uh, on this guy. So we, uh, I will do the following from stealth. Do uh, death chakram, explosive shield, through shield, aim shield, volley for another uh, explosive shield on there. And then I'll do rapid fire, and after that I would go general rotation. If we get kill shield procs, use them immediately when ready. And yeah, let's see how that will look like. So we're in uh, invisible. So we use death chakram into explosive shield, through shield, aim shield. Then into a volley, rapid fire, and then it's the usual rotation again. So you can do like this, and then a kill shield in there, and you do some big damage. So yeah, that's usually how I uh, like to burst. And uh, yeah, if we can look at the damage, rapid fire of course is our main one. Aim shield did some really good damage as well. Yeah, one kill shield, look at how much damage that did, that was absolutely insane. It was a crit though, but you see it can absolutely uh, hurt like hell. An explosive shield, uh, yeah, also did some really nice damage. So yeah, that's usually uh, how we burst as a marksmanship hunter in PvP. So if you stuck around for this long in the video, uh, yeah, we're I can tell you we're nearing the end of the video. But before we go away, I want to also show you like the normal uh, rotation and priorities uh, for the marksmanship hunter. Uh, the priorities you should uh, do as follows. Uh, on number one, uh, use kill shot on cooldown whenever you can. Uh, you have an ability when it comes off cooldown, use it immediately. Uh, second is to apply and maintain your serpent sting on the target. Use rapid fire on cooldown. Uh, after that, use aim shot on cooldown. After that, uh, use arcane shot to spend precise shots buff. Yeah, when you have nothing else to do, uh, you can use uh, steady shot. So how would that look like? We first open up usually from, from stealth, because we're invisible. Get on a big aim shot, so we'll open with that. Aim shield into Serpent Sting, Rapid Fire, and then Arcane Shield, Aim Shield, Arcane Shield. Yeah, and then we had nothing to do, so we do Steady Shield into an Aim Shield, Steady Shield, Kill Shield, Arcane Shield, Rapid Fire into Serpent Sting, into Kill Shield, and then Arcane Shield, Steady Shield. And an aim shield, and that's how you go again. Like that's in in general the rotation as a marksmanship hunter. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, what you should do. Uh, if you uh, like the video, this guide, uh, yeah, please uh, please leave a like. That way, I know you uh, appreciate this video, and I know I uh, I should make more of these. It also helps out this video to pu to be pushed out to more uh, more players, and also helps out uh, the channel by leaving a like. Uh, yeah, it also gives me a huge motivational boost to uh, to keep on going. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, also want to thank you for watching uh, till the end. Uh, if you have any tips for me or any questions or you want to mention anything, you can leave them down in the comments. I'm happy to read through them uh, and reply to you. And if you, uh, yeah, if you think this was helpful, uh, it would also help uh, if you would, uh, yeah, subscribe. And of course, if you want to see more free, uh, weekly videos of me, I usually try to do uh, free uh, videos uh, a week. Usually some, uh, yeah, random battlegrounds videos. That's what I usually like to do the most to chill a little bit uh yeah and to uh <laughs> to kill some other players who doesn't love that right but yeah hopefully this was helpful uh if you want to see another beast mastery uh, uh video where i also go over talents uh yeah like kind of a guide like a one-on-one -on -one beast mastery session uh, let me know in the comments and uh, as i said before thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye